Welcome to the show. Find your balance. 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 Find your balance. That is our goal here at Boost Health. Welcome to episode number 58 of the Boost Health podcast. I am so excited to be back. I'm sorry it's been so long since the last episode. As most of you know, we actually moved back to the U.S. from Hong Kong after being in Hong Kong for three years, and it sort of took us a few months to get settled back into our home here in the U.S. We moved actually to a new state. We are from Kansas, and we moved into Texas. We're in the Dallas, Texas area now. And so it took us a couple months to get established in our new home, and we're actually really thankful that we got in and we got settled before everything with the coronavirus started spreading and hitting. And so, you know, if we've got to be on lockdown mode, at least we've got everything moved in and unpacked and, and ready to go. Most importantly, the home gym, right? We, we got that sorted. And that's actually what we're going to talk about today is workouts from home with gyms closing all over the world. A lot more people are working out from home. And so I thought it'd be really cool to talk about that today on the show. I'm actually going to give you five different options to build a gym at home, and it's going to be everything from no equipment to everything you can imagine. Um, so really any budget and any space will be included. And I'm also going to talk about some advantages of at-home workouts and some different home workout resources. One quick announcement, and then we'll jump right into the show. I just want to quickly announce that the Boost Health online training program is officially live now. And I'm giving folks two different ways that you can work with me through that and through the app. Um, first is the Boost online training. And this is actually three workouts a week that are given to you. And you can do it whether you have no equipment or if you have just dumbbells or if you have access to a full gym. Um, it's going to include video instruction um, from me for each exercise. So you'll be walked through each one of the things that you would do. And there's going to be a lot of variety uh, working through that program. So it's not going to be stale. So giving you lots of new ideas and the exact way that you should execute each exercise. Then the other one is the extra boost online training. So if you're somebody that wants and needs a completely custom program tailored specifically to your goals and your abilities and whatever equipment you have, this is the one for you. Even if it's something where you need daily workouts and daily programming, we've got you covered. Um, it also includes messaging with me. And you'd also be able to share pictures and videos of you performing the exercise, making sure that you're doing it correctly so I could correct anything based on that if necessary. So really cool, two really good options. Um, check it out if you're interested. Just go to myboosthealth.com and click on the online training link. All right, now here is episode 58 of the Boost Health podcast. Five options for at-home gym setup and Benefits and resources of at-home workouts. Time for fitness at home. COVID-19 has us all staying at home. Many places around the world have closed down non-essential in-person services. Schools, offices, restaurants, shops, and gyms have all shut their doors. And the goal for everyone now is to prevent the spread of this pandemic by just staying away from each other. And at first blush, it seems like maintaining wellness balance would be challenging, if not impossible, in these times. I think, however, this situation provides a very unique opportunity to improve our health, as many of us now have more time at home. Kids' activities, job travel, parties, etc., these things are all being canceled. How we use this newfound time at home is really up to us. Instead of filling it with news and social media and Netflix marathons, let's use it to work on our fitness. If you haven't already discovered how wonderful training at home can be, then this is a huge opportunity for you. All right, so I'm going to share seven different benefits of at-home workouts. Number one, you can exercise whenever it's convenient for you, so you don't have to worry about hours at the gym. Number two, there's no travel to and from the gym, so you save some extra time there. Number three, you don't have to leave your kids or your family, so you don't have to worry about childcare or time away from everybody. 
Number four, the equipment is always available, so you're not waiting for somebody to get off of the bench or the squat rack or whatever. Number five, there's no sweat residue from that person who might have used that piece of equipment before you. Number six, you're going to save money. You don't have to worry about gym fees. And number seven, it's good role modeling for your kids. If they see you exercising and working out, it's going to be something they're interested in. So I think that's really good. In 2010, my wife and I were moving, starting new roles with our jobs, and expecting our first child. And we knew that it was going to be more difficult than ever to make it to and from the gym. And with this in mind, we decided to build our very first at-home gym. And honestly, it's been one of the best investments we've ever made. Whether it's bad weather or need for childcare or time of day, the typical workout disruptors are no match for a home gym. Personally, the only missed workouts that I can recall really in the last 10 years are if I was sick. So what does a home gym look like? Well, you can actually get a pretty decent workout without any equipment at all. And if you're willing to invest a fairly small amount, you'll have everything you need for a very thorough fitness program. Also, you can build your gym slowly, piece by piece, as funds allow and as you get stronger. Please note, at the time of this show in late March of 2020, a lot of suppliers of strength equipment are running out of product. Dumbbells, for example, are disappearing from Amazon almost as fast as toilet paper is right now. It appears that building a home gym is quite popular with a lot of the commercial gyms closing. So you may have a little bit of trouble ordering stuff uh, at this time, but hopefully if you dig a little bit and um, with a little bit of time, you'll be able to find everything that you need. So I'm gonna share five different home gym setup options. And no matter what you have uh, for space or finances, there'll be something in there for you. Number one, no equipment. There's lots of excellent strength and cardio exercises that can be performed using your body as equipment. And this is best if you're just beginning strength training and you wanna see if it's something you're gonna stick with. Number two is what I call just dumbbells. Simply adding a few pairs of dumbbells can make your home workouts much more dynamic. Even better than that, adjustable weight dumbbells are great for home gyms because they have a smaller footprint and they're cheaper by the pound. And the third option is what I call Dumbbells Plus, where you add several key accessories to your dumbbells to make your workouts much more dynamic and give you a little bit of variety. So you can add an adjustable bench, suspension straps like TRX straps, um, a fitness mat, resistance bands, and a jump rope. And before I share anything else, I'll just quickly say that links to all of these different types of equipment and resources will be in the show notes. So you can check those out if you're interested. So this Dumbbells Plus option, this is a good option for a medium budget if you want to slowly expand your exercise options. Number four is what I call full strength. So this incorporates the dumbbells, bench, mat, resistance bands, and jump rope from the Dumbbells Plus, and it's gonna add in a power rack, so you can do your squats and your bench press, pull-ups, those types of things. Um, also an Olympic bar and plates and adjustable kettlebells. And this setup is really better for a larger budget um, and if you wanna really add tons of variety to your strength training. And then number five is full strength and cardio. Now, if you're like me, you probably prefer to do your cardio training like running or cycling outside, um, but sometimes weather and childcare or Global pandemics make it a little bit more difficult to get outside, so it's nice to have an option where you can do your cardio training indoors at home. So if you add some or all of these cardio pieces that I'm about to talk about to the full strength equipment section uh, from earlier, you're gonna have a really comprehensive at-home setup. The one option for indoor cardio training is indoor cycling. Cycling is great because it's gentle on the joints and it can give you a really good cardiovascular workout. And with tech advancements in indoor cycling, it's a lot more fun and engaging than it used to be. You can buy a smart bike that's integrated with uh, fitness classes, live fitness classes, such as the Peloton, which is quite popular. Or if you already have a bike or two laying around the house, you can actually connect the bike to a smart trainer. And the smart trainer will actually connect you to applications that can plug you into a different world, really. 
uh, where you can ride with uh, friends from all around the world and put you in different locations. It basically projects you up into an application on a screen and it's pretty neat. It's actually so much fun, pretty addicted to that myself. Uh, one app in particular that's pretty fun is called Zwift with a Z. Another indoor cardio training option is, of course, a treadmill. I know, I know, treadmill is not the most fun thing. A lot of people call it the treadmill for a reason. But there's actually some good advancements in indoor running, too, that make it a lot more fun. Now, obviously, you could just put on a good show, and that'll help take your mind off the boredom of going on the treadmill. But Zwift, the same application I talked about earlier, actually has a run feature as well. So all you need is a little pod that you would put on your shoe and calibrate that with any treadmill. It doesn't have to be a fancy treadmill. And once you do that, you can go into the Zwift application and all of a sudden you're running with your buddies in a different world. Um, so it makes it a little bit more exciting than just staring at the wall or watching a show. Another indoor cardio option is an elliptical. Um, this is a nice choice for a variety if you want something that doesn't have the impact of a treadmill or something different or mo more upright than a uh, bicycle. And then one final indoor cardio training option is a rowing machine. Now, this one's uh, popular with folks that do a lot of cross training because your upper body and your lower body get involved and it's a really good cardiovascular workout. So whatever at-home gym option you go with, just know you're making a good investment. These things are gonna last a really long time. If you think about dumbbells and barbells and squat racks, they're made out of steel. <laughs> they're made to last a lifetime. So you can slowly add these things piece by piece as you're ready and it'll be a good investment as you go. So now that we've discussed the benefits of at-home workouts and we've given you lots of different options for building your own at-home gym, let's talk about some resources that you can use to help you get started on using your equipment. The aforementioned Peloton company is very popular. They have excellent instructors and lots of different types of cycling classes and music, and there's usually something for everybody there. They do offer a few strength training classes too, but they're not quite as in-depth as I'd like to see. For example, they have a 10 minutes chest and back workout. I think everybody knows I really prefer a full body workout um, that works the body more as a kinetic chain, and it would obviously last a little bit longer than 10 minutes. So that just doesn't quite cut it in my opinion. Peloton really is best if you want a high energy spin class environment. Then there's core power yoga. This is a great option for the yogis, obviously. They have a really nice on-demand option that gives access to a huge number of yoga classes and they're in a whole bunch of different styles and durations. So there should be something there for you if you're interested in yoga. Then there's the mirror. This is another really popular one you may have seen advertised. It's a slick tool with a huge variety of home workouts. And as the name suggests, it is an actual mirror. Um, but it has this integrated technology to superimpose a trainer and your personal metrics on top of your reflection. So it's kind of a neat idea. And they do have lots of different workouts. They've got yoga and boot camp, boxing, cardio, etc. But it doesn't appear to incorporate very much equipment. I just saw dumbbells and bands for the most part. Um, but that might be by, by design. They might be trying to make it so that uh, you can use it without having very much equipment. But... Um, if you're trying to get stronger, you're going to be limited in what you can do uh, with not using very many pieces. So this is best if you want a big variety of fitness training, um, but only need sort of a basic level for strength. And then the final resource I'll talk about is the Boost Health online training program. I mentioned this earlier in the announcements. What I'm offering is a completely custom program that's based on your goals, your abilities, and your equipment access and all of your workouts are gonna be completed through an app with videos showing you how to execute each one of the exercises properly. And the custom program also provides access to your coach. So if you have questions to me about how an exercise is done, or if you wanna send me a picture or a video of how you're performing the exercise and making sure, wanna make sure that it's being done correctly, we can do that. If you don't need a fully customized program, like if you don't need workouts every single day or you don't need that access to a coach all the time, then you can also do the regular program where you get three general workouts a week and there still will still give you a program if you have no equipment or if you have dumbbells only 
or if you have access to more of a full gym, we'll do something for you there as well. So this one is best if you wanna have that personal trainer sort of in your pocket on demand or a fully custom program. And I'm gonna close the show with what I see as the social piece of all of this. I realize many folks are missing the social aspect of going to the gym, whether it's meeting your workout buddy or taking a class with friends. While this may be difficult, we're actually quite fortunate to have so many wonderful online options to make home training much more engaging, much more fun, and actually more connected than we've ever had in the past. Thank you all very much for watching the show today. If you like this episode, please give it a like right down here. And also please hit the subscribe button right up here so you keep up with all the latest on the Boost Health TV YouTube channel. Until next time, this is Paul Sandberg saying goodbye and find your balance.